श्री श्री जगन्नाथ बलदेव सुभद्रामाय सुदर्शन भगवान की लक्ष्मी नृसिंह देव अनंत देव की भक्तराज प्रहलाद महाराज की श्री श्री गौर निकाय की भक्ति देवी वृंद देवी तुलसी महारानी की जगत गुरु शील प्रभुपाद की दया गौर प्रेमानंद हरे कृष्ण Thank you for the opportunity of um, inviting me again. It's always nice to come here, and uh, special thanks to all of you for coming despite the rain. Okay, so uh, it's just like uh, there is one gentleman who carried a newborn baby in the rain. You know who that is? It's going to happen in the future in one week. Ah, so he carries Krishna. So. All of you to listen to Krishna and about Krishna. You also enjoy the rain and you keep coming every time. So, uh, big hearty congratulations for all of you and your tapasya. Okay, and those who did not come, uh, they missed out on this. Okay, so they missed out on this compliment. All right. <clears throat> okay, so um, let's begin. I'm going to share a few thoughts um, and a few pastimes of Lord Balaram. Uh, something that uh, we've heard a lot about Krishna, but uh, generally there are so many people who speak about Krishna, uh, but there's not many who speak about Lord Balaram. Right? So we'll share a few thoughts about Balaram and we'll get to know him a little bit. And once you hear about him, uh, you will never forget him. Thank you, uh, devotees. Thank you so much. Very much. Can you uh, tell me general knowledge question? Uh, who's Krishna and who's Balaram here? Blue is Balaram, so that is Balaram. No? Ah, blue Gopi is, right? he is, he is Balaram. Okay. And uh, that is Krishna, obviously. Correct? Right? Would you see uh, Krishna is holding in his hand? Okay, Krishna is holding a flute. And what is Balaram holding in his hand? Here? Yeah? So it's like a it's like a bugle, a bugle uh, to blow. It's like a horn. Okay. Anyone knows what it is made of? No, not really. It is. Yeah, it's made of a horn of a bull. Okay. Obviously, when a bull has a natural death, uh, the horn is removed, bull's horn, and there's a instrument that is made out of that. So, unlike human beings who are while living and after death also we are completely useless, a cow or a bull is useful when it's alive, even after it leaves, it is still very useful to mankind. Correct? Um, even our Murudanga, the very beautiful music that comes out of the Murudanga, that is also from the skin of a cow. But uh, that is a cow, obviously, which is which has passed away naturally. Okay, there is no um, uh, no kind of crime that is happening because in our Sanatana Dharma, the cow is referred to as our mother, non-different from our biological mother, etc. Okay? That is also our mother because we also consume the milk of that mother. So she is uh, always our mother. It is our duty to protect. But uh, this shows how the cow or the bull is in every way it is always used. Hmm? Like that. So that is Krishna and that is Balaram. Now, uh, they are usually, they also wear different colored clothes, but uh, their favorite color, Krishna's favorite color to wear is yellow and Balaram's favorite color to wear is blue. Okay. So uh, we will speak about Krishna also, but not so much about Krishna because Krishna has not come yet. He has not taken birth yet. He will take birth in, in, uh, in a week's time. But uh, tomorrow, the hero for tomorrow is Balaram. That's what we'll talk about him. So, there is no difference between Krishna and Balaram. Okay, so Balaram is uh, Krishna's elder brother. Okay? And the Vedic literature speak about different uh, timelines 
there are different opinions, different shastras talk about different timelines between Krishna and Balaram. Uh, some shastras ref, uh, say that there are about 15 days of difference between the two. Uh, but Balaram's birth is a little complicated. If it's 15 days, then Balaram is born tomorrow. And then in an Ashtami, uh, then uh, Krishna is born. Then how many days of difference is that? About seven or eight days of difference. Right? So, but then uh, the Shastras also mention that Balaram is about 15 days before uh, Krishna. Uh, there are some Shastras that uh, refer to uh, Balaram as maybe even one year elder than Krishna. But there are different versions of that. But it's okay. Uh, that's not uh, so important. But if you really get into the technicalities of that, we will see how when Krishna and Balaram both are growing up. We only say that there's not much difference between Krishna and Balaram because bro both were crawling together, both learned how to walk together, they learned how to run together. So based on that, uh, there is a scripture called Garga Samhita. So in Garga Samhita, we learn that uh, their age is almost the same, maybe a few days of difference between the two. Okay, that's how we understand if you want to get into the technical details of it. However, uh, now before uh, Krishna was born. His parents were arrested. All of us know this, right? So both Vasudeva and Devaki, they were arrested by yeah, Kamsa, who was uh, Devaki's brother, right? So after they heard the divine voice, both of them were put in the jail. So first uh, technical question, another one, okay? If the birth of Krishna was so problematic for Kamsa. Why didn't he put Vasudeva and Devaki separately in a different jail? Then the problem would have not come only. Right? Only if they are together, the child is going to take birth. So if they are not together, then the problem is solved. So why did Kamsa do that? Why didn't he put them in separate jails? Was there a shortage of rooms or something? What was the reason? If it was you and me, we would have thought of that, no? Kamsa is very intelligent. Then why didn't he think of that? Yeah. What do you think could be the reason? Because of arrogance. Okay, because he thought he can challenge Vishnu. He thought, what will he do if he takes birth? As if he can kill. You know who are my friends. You know who I am. You know how powerful I am. Nothing. He cannot do anything. Let him take birth. Let him come. Sometimes when, uh, if somebody says, you know, I will come in, uh, you know, and punch you and beat you and all that, if we become very arrogant, then we will come, come, we will see. You know, we don't even know how strong that person is. We may challenge that person out of foolishness. This is exactly why Kamsa, though, if that arrogance was not there, he would have used his intelligence. Of course, Krishna is the most intelligent. He would have found some other way to take birth. But then, uh, Krishna was also very confident about Kamsa's arrogance. So, well, is really so, so uh, this is one of the reasons of the downfall of any person who is not a devotee of Krishna. They become very arrogant and they start saying things that, um, uh, that resemble what Kamsa has said. And there are many people even in today's world who speak words like that. Anyway. So, this is one of the reasons. Now, in, in the, he, he had uh, Vasudeva and Devaki together. Now, there were some children who were born before Krishna. And Kamsa comes, every time a child is born, Kamsa comes. And he, very brutally, he kills the children. He smashes them on the wall and he kills them. How many children did Kamsa kill? Six. Six, seven? Six, six, seven. Krishna was the eighth one. Balram was the seventh one. So how many did he kill? Six. Okay. So uh, Kamsa comes and he kills six children. Now all these six, none of the six were Vishnu Tattva. They were all Jiva Tattva. Ordinary people like you and me. Okay. Of course they were Devatas and they were cursed and they were born. We will talk about that on another day. Okay. Uh, but still, they were Jiva Tattva, they were not Vishnu. Hence, it was easy for Kamsa to kill like ordinary babies. However, 
The seventh one was Balarama. Now Balarama is also Vishnu. Okay, that is why the our Acharyas explain there is no difference between Krishna and Balarama. There is no difference in their strength, in their power, in their glory. There is no difference at all. In fact, the only difference between the two is that Krishna is darkish blue and Balaram is white. Now, his, the color of his skin is so beautiful. The Shastras explain it is so beautiful. You cannot compare it with anything. In fact, even Krishna's skin cannot be comp compared. His complexion cannot be compared with anything. But because in this material world, we are unable to understand what Krishna looks like, then we do a, the closest comparison is if you step out and you look at the clouds right now, they are dark clouds. So rain-filled cloud. There is a comparison of that. But it is said that Balaram's color is so beautiful, if you, if you compare it to milk, it's an insult. If you compare it to conch, it's an insult. Because his skin is just so unique and so lovely to look at. There is no comparison. It is so beautiful. Balaram is so beautiful. It is said that when, when baby Balaram would crawl on the floor towards his mother, it resembled, looked as if like a piece of cloud had fallen from the sky to the ground. And the cloud is moving because of some breeze. It looked like that. Because he was so beautiful, Balaram. So that is Balaram. Now Balaram appeared in the womb of Mother Devaki. But we've also heard Balaram's mother is somebody else. Who? Rogini. That is why he is not called as Devaki Nandana. Devaki Nandana is Krishna. Balaram is called as Rohini Nandana. So but I am telling you that he is born in Devaki's stomach. What happened? So he was, he actually appeared, he is the actual son of Vasudeva and Devaki. Now, why did he appear there? Because just like if Krishna were to come here, Krishna is here, and that is why we keep all this very clean, because we say that if Krishna is coming, Krishna is going to come here, let's keep this place nice and, nice and clean. We don't keep it dusty and all that. It has to be hygienic, it has to be clean, it has to be pavitra, it has to be. So, purity is of different kinds. Purity is an external cleanliness also, purity is internal cleanliness also. So, Lord Balaram, he appears in the womb of Devaki to make sure that the womb is purified. Because she has had multiple births before that, right? So, he, he says the Lord is now going to come and appear. So, this is the mood of Balaram. Balaram is also Bhagavan. That's why we call him Lord Balaram. But still, he is Sevaka Bhagavan. Okay? He is Sevaka Bhagavan. He is Savior Bhagavan. So Krishna is Bhagavan who is accepting service. And Balaram is also Bhagavan. But he is born to offer service. That is his mood. That is why Baladeva, he always teaches us how to serve Krishna. That is why he is known as the Guru. In fact, he is Adi Guru, the original Guru. So any Guru that you see who is an authentic Guru, who is a real Guru, represents Balaram. Anybody who does not represent Balaram perfectly is a bogus Guru, is not a real Guru. Okay? That, that is the uh, Siddhanta of the Shastras. So, Balaram, he appears in many ways. This lamp, that lamp, the bell, the plate, the asana where the Lord is standing, the mridanga, the karatana, everything is Balaram. He appears in different forms. That is why one of his names is Ananta Shesha. What is the meaning of Shesha? One of the meaning of the word Shesha is remaining. Which means he doesn't wait for anything to be remaining also. Even the most remaining that all of you are doing different kinds of service. Is there nothing else to do? Some kind of service? Shesha. Even that he takes a leader. He doesn't leave any opportunity to serve Krishna. In fact, Brajadham, the whole Vrindavan Dham, the remnant itself is Balaram. So Balaram appears in different forms. It's inconceivable how many ways Balaram is there. Balaram is so uh, so much in service of Krishna that 
he is he appears even in um, the arms of the devotees as Karathal and Mardanga. He says, "That's okay. You beat me. I will I will be beaten up for Krishna seva, right? Like that." So. <clears throat> Should I continue? Okay. So this is uh, Balaram. So when Balaram appeared in the womb of Devaki as the seventh child, she was pregnant and she could feel that this child is not an ordinary child. It's not like my six experiences that I've had earlier. Something is different. And she was feeling happy all her fear from her heart had gone away. Because the Lord itself is there in her womb. How can she have any fear? She was not scared of anything anymore. But at the same time, she was thinking, if this is the Supreme Lord, but the Supreme Lord said that he's going to come as my eighth child. But why am I feeling special now? So she had multiple thoughts in her mind. But Krishna... But Krishna, who had not appeared yet, Krishna had a different plan. Krishna ordered his internal potency. I'll explain who she is. Her name is Yogamaya. His potency is called as Yogamaya. So he ordered Yogamaya that Lord Balarama is right now in the womb of Devaki. I would like Balaram to be shifted from the womb of Devaki to the womb of Rohini, the Rohini who's sitting far away in Vrindavana. This was happening in Mathura. So, uh, so this, it was a very mysterious thing that Balaram was moved from the womb of Devaki to the womb of Rohini. And Rohini was not aware of it. And neither was Devaki. Even Devaki did not know what is going on. And one morning she suddenly felt uneasy and she felt that her child was missing. The womb is suddenly empty. And Kamsa had heard that, uh, that she's pregnant and he wanted to come and check that is the baby born? What is going on? And he appeared, he uh, entered the jail and he sees that Devaki is there but he sees that she's not pregnant anymore. So, uh, so Kamsa in his mind, he thought that Devaki uh, had a miscarriage. He thought, oh, she's had a miscarriage. He felt bad for her, but uh, he said, okay, whatever. But now he's also very confused because he's waiting for number eight. But now he's confused. Is number eight including this or excluding this? Is the next one going to come? Is that seven? Or, or is the next one eight? Right? Material calculations are like that. We keep calculating and we think I can calculate everything and then somehow I'll become, uh, you know. But then Krishna's calculations are, are always very mysterious. And whatever we think never really happens in this world. Okay? So Kamsa also such an expert, wise man, but he, was, he became very confused at that time. He didn't know what to do. Anyway, he said that, uh, whatever, so we'll, we'll decide. So he went back. Now, um, that was indeed number seven. And number seven now had moved to uh, Rohini's womb. And number eight, again, Krishna appears. Because now Devaki's heart is filled with, uh, with fear. Again, she's thinking, what is going on? And I'm very confused. Immediately, from the heart of Vasudeva, Krishna appears into the heart of Devaki. Okay? So this was not... a uh, usual form of conception that happens between a man and a woman. So this was a heart-to-heart -heart transfer. So um, Krishna, uh, sorry, Krishna from the heart of Vasudeva, from the pure heart of Vasudeva, moved to the pure heart of Devaki and from her heart entered the womb. And once again, she was pregnant. And this was very confusing. This was very confusing for Kamsa. He said, but there was no child and now there is a child. This is really mysterious. And suddenly he, he goes and he sees Devaki. Devaki is shining. She is bright. You know, anyway, if you look at the lady who is pregnant, you see that, you know, she is anyway bright and she looks, you know, because there is a life inside of her. So there is something very, very nice to look at. But imagine if the Supreme Lord himself is there in the womb of a, of a mother. How bright and how shining she was. 
So Kamsa immediately knew that this pregnancy is not ordinary. So he said, my confusion of number seven or eight, I think I'm clear now that this, this is eight, this is Krishna, and uh, or this is Vishnu, he's going to come. He did not know that the Lord's name is Krishna. He said, Vishnu is going to come now. He said, I will wait. Uh, he also considered killing her right then. He thought, before the baby comes also, let me just stab her and kill. But again, he was thinking, but I'm the great Kamsa and people think I'm so powerful. And what will people say that I killed a pregnant woman? You know, should I do this? Should I not do this? He said, okay, we'll, we'll deal with it later. So he went back. Now it is said that a devotee always thinks about Krishna. But in this case, a daitya, like Kamsa, he also always, 24 hours, he always thought about Krishna. Even while climbing the steps, one, two, three, four, number eight, when he climbs the eighth step, he'll think of Krishna, number eight. So anywhere he sees number eight, he would remember Krishna. And he would think, my death is coming. My death is coming. And there are a lot of bad omens, you know, in uh, Tantra Shastra, if you study Tantra Shastra, uh, there are bad omens. Bad omens means if something bad is supposed to happen, you start getting, you know, like parts of your body flickering, all that happens, no? Uh, so, if the right side of the body, like your right arm, uh, right eye, you know, all this flickering happens, then it is auspicious for the men. For women, it is not auspicious. It, it is inauspicious if the right side, right eye flickers and all that. If the left eye flickers, it is inauspicious for men, but it is auspicious for women. Okay, that's how it works. So some people may say that, no, 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 I mean, is this true? Maybe it's just some nerve switching and all that. No, 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 it is, it is actually true. This is there, reference of this is there. Even in Ramayana, as old as even Ramayana, when Lord Ramachandra was about to kill Kamsa also, uh, Lord Ramachandra's right side was flickering. And this was, uh, Valmiki Muni explains that this was a, a sign of auspiciousness that Lord Ram will win. Uh, so, to explain astrology and Shastra also, Ramayana and Mahabharata explains it in different ways. Anyway, there were different uh, omens like that. And there is a scripture called the Swapna Shastra. Swapna Shastra talks about different dreams. And what do different dreams actually even mean? Right? So, even dreams are defined according to the time that it comes. Like in the night, early in the night, midnight. Or early in the morning, etc. Right, so differently. Uh, in fact, if uh, they are all connected to the grahas, also different grahas have different um, effects. If you get a dream at a certain point in the night, there is a certain graha affecting it. Early in the morning, there is a different graha uh, that comes in your dream. Uh, so anyway, so in this way, Balaram was moved. Now, what happened to Krishna, etc., that all of you already know, but we will talk about that elaborately um, at some other point. But um, Krishna was moved from after he was born. Uh, the whole episode happens. So Krishna was taken from there to Mathura. Okay, and who carried him? Vasudeva, right? So Vasudeva carried him, and Vasudeva carried him. It was heavy, heavy rain, and it was uh, flooding everywhere, and he crossed the Yamuna River. And he takes um, Krishna to the house of Yashoda Mai. Now, Rohini has given birth to Balara. Okay. And Yashoda was also pregnant. And she gave birth to a girl. Okay. She gave birth to a girl. And by the order of Krishna, Vasudeva carried Krishna to Nanda Baba's house. And everybody was asleep. In fact, there Kamsa and all the soldiers had fallen asleep. They were in deep sleep. And here, uh, Maharaj, Nanda, Yashodamai, everybody was asleep. Nobody even knew what was going on. The only two people who were awake, one was Krishna, the other one was Vasudeva. Nobody else was awake. So Vasudeva entered there, the jail door opened. Here, um, uh, Nanda Baba's house door had opened. So Vasudeva entered, he kept Krishna and he carried the baby girl and he brings the baby girl back. Now the baby girl comes back and he brings her to the jail. But at the same time, 
Vasudeva is thinking, did I do the right thing? Now Kamsa is going to come, he's going to kill. We saved Krishna, but now this poor girl, what is going to happen to her? And But it was Krishna's order also. Krishna and the form of Narayana had come and told us that you do this and we've done that. But what if this poor girl, have to, you know, what will we tell Yashoda? But Yashoda did not know anything about what happened. And the next morning they woke up and they thought, oh, I thought it was a baby girl, but it is a baby boy. Right? And it's very beautiful. And he was so beautiful that they forgot everything. Right? So he was so attractive, so beautiful. That is the meaning of the word Krishna also. That he is all attractive. There is nothing more attractive than Krishna. But this baby girl was transferred there. And this baby girl was the sweetest, most adorable baby girl. And Kamsa comes and he says, okay, now I'm ready to kill the egg child. And he says, hey, Vishnu, but Vishnu is a girl. How can it be a girl? How can Vishnu take birth as a girl? And this Vishnu, you cannot trust him. He will come in any form. So I cannot take any risks. So he lifts the baby. And he's about to throw the baby to the wall to smash her. And the baby just slips out of the hands of Kamsa. And the baby is just floating in air. And Kamsa is wondering what happens. And suddenly the baby takes the form of a, of a baby. A very beautiful baby with multiple arms. And she's holding Shanka Chakra Gada Padma. Um, she's holding a sword. She's holding bow and arrow. And she's got multiple arms. And her eyes are red, blazing red. And she looks at Kamsa. And she tells him that, you fool. You think you can kill me? Do you know who I am? And uh, he, he doesn't say yes or no. He's just opening his mouth, wondering what happened. Who is this? Uh, she says, I can kill you right now. But your killer, your killer, your death has already taken birth. And he will come when the time is right. And she disappears from them. So Srimad Bhagavatam explains that Krishna appreciated this seva by Yogamaya so much that he blesses her and says that in the future, you will be, your temples will be there all over, all over the world. And people will know you by different names. Names like Yogamaya, Chandi, Bhadrakali, Durga, in so many Narayani, so many different names. So in these multiple names, she is also a sister of Krishna. And she appeared as a sister of Krishna. And she appeared in so many different ways. Right? So, um, this is how um, Yoga Maya appears. Now, Yoga Maya in herself is a great, great mystery. And uh, if you read Srimad Bhagavatam, there is Yoga Maya, there is Mahamaya. Is there a difference between the two? Actually, there is no difference. There is only one Shakti. But the Shakti appears in different forms. Okay, maybe someday I will speak about that elaborately if you are interested to know how um, Shakti works. Um, anyway, so now that uh, Krishna, now let's go to Balaram. Now Balaram appears and later on now Krishna is also there and Krishna and Balaram, they start growing up together and uh, as they grow up together, Krishna is very naughty and Balaram being the elder brother is always trying to protect Krishna. <clears throat> is always trying to protect Krishna. Okay, the session is dedicated to Srila Prabhupada. So this was Nanda Baba and Yashoda Mai. And this is Rohini when Balaram moved into her womb. And then later on Krishna is born. And this is the priest who comes and names Krishna and Balara. Any of you know what is his name? Darthamuni. Okay. The Samhita that I explained earlier that talks about the details of Krishna and Balara was written by this Muni. That is why it is called as Garga Samhita. So his name is Garga Muni. Okay. A very great astrologer and a great uh, Acharya. He is the one who names Krishna. And he says, there is nobody more attractive than this baby. And nobody can attract anybody just like this baby does. So we will call him Krishna. 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 And there is nobody who has given more joy to the Vrajabhasis than the other boy. And that is why his name will be Rama. Rama means one who gives joy to everyone. So his name is Rama. 
But because there is nobody who is stronger than him, even as a baby, his fists were so strong, his arms were so strong. Even when Gargamuni carried him, oh, your so his arms are so strong. And Gargamuni said that there is I have never seen a baby stronger than him. So his name will be Rama, but people will call him Balarama. Right? So he was called as Balarama. Of course, he will be known by many other names when time comes. So in this way, Krishna and Balaram were named together. So this is also proof that they were not one year difference and they were very close by together. They were born together. Of course, they were very well disciplined children. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> so both Krishna and Balaram were very famous for stealing butter. Right? So they were very famous for stealing butter. In fact, Balaram was little hesitant but Krishna was never hesitant. He was always breaking pots. He was always stealing butter. And it is he, they were always struggling. The elder gopis there who were, their business there was churning uh, curd, making butter and hanging. So they would come and complain to Mother Yashoda that both your children, they are coming and you know, to Yashoda and Rohini that your children come and they are always struggling and stealing our butter. And uh, uh, Yashoda Mai would, would scold both of them. So after they both, they would say that, okay, then we will not come to your house and steal. Then one or two days, if they don't come, then these elderly gopis would feel bad that why aren't they coming? They would complain externally, but internally, you know what they would do? They would sometimes hide, hang a pot low enough. They can hang it high so that Krishna and Balram cannot reach it. But they would hang it a little lower that they would also think if Krishna comes to steal, he should not find it very difficult. So they would hang it a little low because they wanted him to come and steal. But when he comes and steals, then they would go and complain also. So they liked this opportunity to go and catch Krishna and complain because otherwise it's very difficult to get Krishna. So when he comes and steals, oh, they'll grab him and they will take him and all that. So in this way, Krishna and Balaram were very, very, very naughty, both of them. But Balaram uh, was a little more serious compared to Krishna. Okay, because he was little and he was trying to be more responsible. But when they were very small, they were very naughty that way. So in this way, Krishna and Balaram continued to grow and they became cowherd boys. They were always walking around. They were always together. But Balaram was always, for, always looking for opportunities to serve Krishna. Even though Krishna was younger, he would massage Krishna's feet and uh, he would serve Krishna in this way. Uh, Whenever Krishna has gone for long walks and Krishna would become tired, he would ma massage Krishna's feet. And he would not let Krishna do that. So sometimes Krishna would also insist that you are my elder brother and I must serve you also. So sometimes when Balaram is sleeping, Krishna along with all the other Gopa friends, they would all gather, gather around him and serve him. This is Balaram sleeping and Krishna is massaging his feet there. And all the other Gopa boys, so one is singing songs, one is fanning. In this way, they would get an opportunity to serve Baladeva, who is elder than everybody. So in this way, uh, they, they passed their time very nicely and uh, they did not have to go to school. They only played with the cows. Very nice, no, children? We also would like to do that. Uh, not go to school and just play with Krishna and Balram the whole day. Uh, that would be very nice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this way they would uh, pass their day and night, but they went to school. I'll come to that later. Okay. <laughs> Don't get inspired there. All right. So in this way, uh, you know, there was something very unique happened. A few demons that uh, Balaram killed. So there was one demon called Pralambha Asura. Now this demon is very, very mysterious because he could change the form of his body. So what happened was all the friends of Krishna, all the boys, they would come together and they would play. So sometimes a boy does not come because maybe he's not well or he has some other work or some for some reason he would not come. They'd have a puja in their house. So this Pralambha Sura would do a lot of research. He would keep hiding. What do these Gopa friends look like? What are the days they come? What are the days they don't come? For many, many days and weeks, he did a lot of research. He did a lot of research work. And after that, he saw that one day, one of the Gopa boys, one of the friends of Krishna and Balram did not come. So he took the exact form of that Gopa boy. He looked exactly like him. His voice changed. His voice also was like him. His behavior was like him. And in that way, he appeared along with Krishna. 
and he told Krishna that, come, let's play. And Krishna was playing with him. But Krishna realized that something is different about this boy because you cannot hide from Krishna. Correct? So Krishna knew there's something different. So he said, okay, all right. So let us get into uh, you know, a, a tug of war game. There have been schools we now also play tug of war. Krishna and Balram invented that. So tug of war. So they were playing tug of war at that time. And there was one, one was Krishna's team, one was Balaram's team. And the game was that whoever loses should carry the winning team on their shoulder. Okay. And this Pralambha Sura, Krishna told him, you come to my team. Okay. We will, together we will defeat Balaram. And they pulled and they pulled and they pulled. And the great powerful Balaram won. And Krishna's team lost. So Krishna said, oh, we lost. Now what to do? Now we have to carry someone. So uh, Pralamba Sura said, I will carry Balaram. So he thought, I'll kill Krishna, but let me first kill his brother Balaram. We'll separate both of them. I'll kill Balaram, then I'll kill Krishna. So he said, okay. So then he carried Balaram on his shoulder, carried him on his shoulder. And uh, while taking him around, he took him very far away into the forest somewhere. And Balaram was wondering, why is this Gopa taking me so far away from somewhere? And he was asking him, why are you taking me? And why are we going so deep into the forest? Our parents told us not to go so deep in the forest. Where are you taking us? And uh, he said, just come along, just come along. And Balaram realized that this is not an ordinary Gopa boy. He realized that this is a, a demon, an Asura. So Balaram slowly, he increased his weight. And his weight increased so much that he became as heavy as a mountain. And this Pralambha Sura, now in the form of a small boy, couldn't carry Padaram anymore because he was so big. So he was forced to come into his big Rakshasa form. So he took his big form. But Padaram was very, very heavy. And Padaram immediately, he gave him one punch on his head. And this Pralambha Sura, he falls on the ground. And he immediately dies. Now, the lesson from this is that many times, even as devotees, we may look like devotees. You know, we can, it's very easy to dress as a devotee. You know, wear a kurta, dhoti, tilak, and you look like a devotee. But uh, what is there in the heart is what is actually important. Isn't it? If I'm not a devotee in my heart, but externally I look like a devotee, then uh, I can cheat many people. But I can never cheat the Adi Guru. Balaram can never be cheated. Because Balaram he completely dislikes it when someone pretends to be a devotee, but internally they are not a devotee. So we should always be very open with Balaram and not pretend. And any weakness that we have, we must openly talk about it to Balaram because he is the strength of all the devotees and he will give that strength to us. But we should not be a Mithyachari. Krishna speaks in the Bhagavad Gita and he says that um, a person who is a pretender is a Mithyachari. So we should not be a Mithyachari, a pretender. If I'm not very great, I'm not very great. I should present myself as it is to, to Balaram, to my Guru. And in this way, Balaram will give us the strength to become a nice devotee, a wonderful devotee. But um, cheating, that is something that Balaram does not tolerate. Okay, That is what we learn from Pralamba Asura. Now let's talk about another Asura that Balaram killed. Now for this Asura, to talk about this Asura, you have to go back to Ramayana. In Ramayana, the Vanarasena. In the Vanarasena, there were two very powerful Vanaras. Okay? So this is um, Drivida and his brother Mahinda. Now both of them, these brothers were so strong and so powerful. They were big generals in the army of Sugriva. In fact, they were so strong and powerful that they were along with Hanuma. They were serving along with Hanumanji and they were on the same grade. Hanumanji, of course, was the chief, but they were also almost on the same grade and they had killed many Asuras. And this Dvivida had once gotten into, uh, you know, Lord Ramachandra was so just, you know, his amazing personality that Dvivida, he used to kill Ramana's uh, soldiers in the night 
because okay. night fighting in the night, war in the night is not allowed. It's against principles of war. But Dvivida used to go in the night and kill. So Amsa did not know, uh, sorry, uh, Ravana did not know what to do. So he came to justice to Sri Ram. And he told Lord Ram that your soldier is killing our soldiers in the night. Please do justice. So even a Rakshasa like Ravana, he had faith in the justice, not in his justice, but he had faith in the justice of Sri Ram. So he would approach Sri Ram. And Sri Ram said, okay. And he told Dvivida uh, that, uh, he told Lakshmana that please go and tell Dvivida not to do that. Lakshmana goes and tells Dvivida, please don't do this in the night. It's not good that you're killing me. We told we will not fight in the night, we will not fight. But Dvivida did not listen to Lakshmana. He thought, who are you to tell me? But he would say, only if Sri Ram says, I will listen. Otherwise, I will not listen to you. So he disrespected Lakshmana. In fact, he would not listen so much even to Hanumanji. Because he himself was so powerful. He thought, why should I listen to anyone? Only when Sri Ram told him, he would say, hmm, okay. Fine. I'll not do it. Right? So he was always internally, there was some, even amongst the Vanaras, they were all devotees, but small group, there were some politics and this and that. You know, you may have a favorite political party, but even amongst the political party, there will be some politics and this and that. No? So even amongst them, it was going on there. So later on, of course, the whole war was over and all that. And this Dvivida, he continued to live. And he lived and he lived and he lived and he extended his life so far as Dwapara Yuga also. Now you see the people who lived in Treta Yuga, if they continue to live in Dwapara Yuga, their height, their body, their strength, everything is completely different. The different people of Treta Yuga are very large. Their height, their body is very large. And Vanaras were anyway very big. And their strength also was mighty. So this Dvivida, he appeared in Dwapara Yoga also. He continued to live. By this time, he had many friends, but none of his friends were good people. He had made friends with some great Rakshasas of that time. So even if a person was a devotee, was serving Sri Ram, if your Sangha is not good, if your association is not good, it will spoil your brain. That is why all of us are meeting, so that we are all devotees and we are all in the same direction, but if we all go and start meeting people who are against Krishna, who say that all yeah, oh, these are stories, all oh, this is not true, all oh, this is not, oh, what is going to happen once, twice, thrice, it will start affecting our brain, it will start affecting our thinking. And we will also start thinking like that. And the same thing happened to Dvivida because he started as, uh, associating with different kinds of Rakshasas like Naraka, Sura, etc., etc. So this Dvivida appeared and he would cause so much of trouble to people. And it is said that he would take people. He would put them inside caves and he would put a stone and block that cave. He would just lock them there. He would enter the ocean and he would keep throwing the water because his arms were so powerful. He would keep pushing the water to the land so powerful that he would drown the shore with, uh, with his arms. He was so powerful. So once Balaram was there in the forest and along with B Balaram, there were a lot of gopis also. And at this time, Dvivida saw this. And he saw Banara and from far. And he said that, oh, there are a lot of these gopis. Let's see, let me go and trouble them. So he started acting like a monkey. You know, all the monkey activities, bringing his eyes together and doing things like that. So uh, all the gopis who were there, they were very innocent and they saw the monkey like behavior of Dvivida and they started laughing. They thought, you know, oh, this monkey is acting crazy. Uh, but then, um, Suddenly, this Dvivida showed his real colors and he caught the clothes of the gopis and he started pulling the clothes of the gopis. And Balaram, who was just watching his monkey activity, suddenly when he saw that, you know, he, uh, he had grabbed the clothes of the gopis in that way, uh, Balaram immediately took a stone and he hurled it at the head of Dvivida and it hit the head of Dvivida. And the moment it hit him, he started bleeding. And there was a little blood that was flowing. And Dvivida, he just took his hand to, to show that your stone doesn't make any difference to me. He just wipes off the blood and uh, he just stares at Balaram. Just to say that I don't care. Your stone makes no difference. You know, this is also something that arrogant people do. So Balaram said, okay, now it's time to teach him a lesson. So Balaram immediately gets into a fight. Now, what uh, Dvivida does is that he pulls a tree 
Now this is a big massive tree. It pulls a tree just like we could pull a small new sapling, small plant from the ground. He pulls an entire tree and he hurls this tree at Balaram. And the tree comes and hits Balaram's chest. And Balaram goes a step behind and then he moves the tree. Balaram is unaffected by that. Balaram takes a, ro a rock and he throws it at Dvibhida. Dvibhida pulls out another tree and he hits that rock. Balaram takes a stone and he throws it. Dvibhida hits a, his side with a tree. Sounds like a very famous game. Nah, they only invented cricket. Okay. So, <laughs> so Balaram would throw rocks. Dvibhida would hit it with the tree. In this way, the rocks had become powdered. The trees had a lot of deforestation in that place. Right. So, um, in this way, Balaram and Dvibhida got into a big fight. And this fight went on for a very long time. And it is said that Balaram could have killed him at any time. But Balaram wanted to have some fun also. But uh, when Balaram stopped having fun, he said, oh, now let's end this game. And Balaram just jumps and gives him one punch on the chest of Dvibhida. And Dvibhida immediately, he falls on the ground dead, flat. Okay. So uh, this is another, that is why he is called as Adi Guru, because anybody who is pretending, anybody who is, uh, thinks they are very arrogant and very powerful, Balaram is known to bring down the arrogance of the arrogant people. So we also, at some level, we may have our own arrogance for whatever reason. Maybe somebody is very rich, maybe somebody is very good looking, maybe somebody can speak very well, maybe somebody is very good in education or whatever, their background, this, that, for so many reasons. I have a better car, she has a better car, he has a better car, for whatever reason. So Balaram, if we feel that I have maybe some hidden arrogance inside, we should approach Balaram. And in this way, Balaram will remove that. And the final pastime for the day is that when Krishna and Balaram, they, they had grown up now and, you know, and uh, they were in Hastinapura, uh, Krishna had many children also. One of the children of uh, Krishna, his name was Samba. Okay. Now, Samba is known to be an incarnation of Kartikeya. Kartikeya, also known as Subramanya. Right? So he is known by Askanda, so many different names. So this Kartikeya, he appears as one of the sons of Krishna. And his name is Samba. His name was Samba. Sa Amba. Amba means mother. Okay. Sa Amba. So he was always with his mother. He never let go of his mother. Even as a small child. You know, the small ch children sometimes, whenever they see the mother, they are somebody, come here, come here. No, 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 no. Always with the mother. So uh, he was like that, always with the mother. So they named him Samba because he never leaves us. Not Samba, like our Ibli Samba. Samba, Samba. Okay, Samba. Okay, like that. So this Samba, once, once he grew up, you see, uh, this is the way of the Kshatriyas. Kshatriyas, ordinary people go, they find a girl, you know, then uh, talk, parents talk, they get married. Kshatriyas were not like that. Kshatriya, they liked it that some Swayamvara is going on. And they would go, they would kidnap the girl and come. In fact, the girl also liked it. The girl would feel that, wow, what a man. Right? We should not try these days. You know, we get into trouble. But those days, the Shatranis were like that. Even the Kshatriyas were like that. So, Duryodhana's daughter, her name was Lakshmana. Okay? Duryodhana's daughter's name was Lakshmana. Samba really liked uh, uh, Lakshmana. So, he said, I have to get married to her. But there were many other princes and they were all waiting for their turn, you know, for uh, proving themselves as capable people. Samba had no time for this. He said, oh, all these cockroaches, they are coming here. You know, they are on no match to me. Uh, why should I waste my time? So he just entered and he carried uh, Lakshmana and he walked out of that place and he, uh, on his chariot. So looking at this, once a prince carries away the princess, then there is no returning. You can't. But, you know, this was the great Hastinapura. And in Hastinapura, there is uh, so many great heroes are there. Bhishma Pitama is there. Dronacharya is there. Uh, Duryodhana is there. Dhritasana is there. And uh, Karana is there. So many powerful people. And they said, okay, 
he's taking her, but we can't just let him take without a good fight. We have to fight him and defeat him and humiliate him because he's trying to humiliate us. So they all took their bows and arrows and their chariots and they, they chased Samba. And Samba gave such a good fight to all of them, single-handedly. All of them knew that one-on-one -on -one they were not able to defeat Samba. He was so powerful. He was a young boy, but he was able to defeat Karna also. He was able to defeat all of them. So now, just like what they did for to Abhimanyu, just like that, together, they attacked Samba. And they defeated him. And Samba said, you guys are cowards. You can't do it. You can't come one-on-one. -on -one. You guys are cowards. So uh, they said, whatever. But they did not kill Samba. They arrested him and locked him up. Now, when Krishna got to know about this and the Yadukula, they got to know about this. They said, take me army. We'll go right now and attack Hathinapura. Uh, but Balaram said, no, hold on. Uh, well, let's, let me go as a Duta and I will try and settle it. You know, a middleman, I try and settle it, a peacemaker. Uh, later on, Krishna also does, does that as a peacemaker, right, between Pandavas and the Kauravas. But both of them fail. Okay, both of them fail because this is a very important lesson. Why did both of them fail? To show us that Krishna and Balaram, they always give free will to the Jiva. They give instructions, but they will never force you. They will give you instructions and they will give you your free will, that you decide what you want. That's why Balaram also did not force. Anyway, Balaram went there. Long story short, Balaram goes there. The moment they get to know that Balaram comes there, Balaram goes there along with another cousin called Uttava. They all go there. And uh, looking at Balaram, oh, right here, Balaram is here. And they all go and you know they offer different kinds of gifts and all that. And they tell Uttava, please take us to Balaram. Balaram doesn't enter the palace. They go, he goes, he waits for them in the garden. So they all go to the garden and they meet Baladeva. They pay over senses. Oh, you're here. We're so happy to meet you and all that. So Balaram says, thank you. They share pleasantries with each other, nice words. After that, Balaram says, anyway, um, you have Samba with you. So with politically right words, Balaram says, Krishna has forgiven you. So you can now return uh, Samba and I will go back. And the moment they hear that, all the sweet words that were spoken by the people of Hastinapura, the great heroes, they immediately become serious. And they look at Balaram and they said, you will forgive us. Krishna will forgive us. You should know that you are surviving because of us. The Yadukula in Dwaraka, all of you are there because we are allowing you to be there. And they all talk, talk with each other with a loud voice so that Balaram can hear, can hear. And they say, looks like the shoes want to become the crown today. You know, they use harsh words. And Balaram is just listening to the whole thing. And uh, they say, you know, all the Chamara, Vyajana, while doing Arati, we use Chamara. Chamara is the um, the white uh, thing, the yak tail, that is Chamara. The peacock feather, that's called Vyajana. Or these are all signs of royalty that your Krishna uses. All of this is because we are allowing him to use. You should know that. Okay? So, Balaram just listens to all of that and all of them walk back into their palace. And Balaram doesn't say a single word. But his eyes are becoming redder and redder and redder after every conversation. Every word they say. And Balaram says, okay, you have said this about me. You have said this about Ugrasena, King Ugrasena. And these are, and you are speaking about Krishna, my Krishna, who Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva come there to meet and offer respects in Dwaraka to meet Krishna. You are speaking about that Lord. And you're saying, using such words on him, there is no forgiveness for you. And immediately, Balaram, he takes his plow. He takes his plow and close to Hastinapura is a very famous river. Which river? Yamuna. Now, Yamuna uh, is a tributary of another great river, Ganga. Right? So they come. Uh, from the same source. Now, Hastinapura is today's Delhi. Right? Delhi. Right? So, um, during this particular time, Balaram says that I am going to drag the whole of Hastinapura with my plow and I am going to drag Hastinapura into the rivers of Yamuna. And by the order of Balaram, he tells Yamuna, swell. 
and Yamuna's river starts overflowing like that. The moment Balaram orders, and he says, swell and don't stop. And the waters keep increasing, and Balaram just puts his plow onto the, puts it on the ground, and there's an entire crack around the whole Hastinapura. And everybody feels that great tremor, great earthquake that nobody has felt before. And they feel, well, what is going on? And then they get informed that Balaram has decided to topple the whole of Hastinapura into Yamuna, and Yamuna is already overflowing. And then they realize their position. And they come running. They come running and they fall at the feet of Balaram and they say, please forgive us. We, in fact, you know, these are all political people. And they change their tone immediately. We were joking. I don't know why you're taking it so seriously. You know, we just, out of fun, we're all relatives and we just made a comment like that. It was just for fun. You know, we thought you are our own relative and that is why we made fun. We didn't know you would take it so seriously. In fact, we already bought Samba. We went back so that we can bring Samba here. Why are you taking it so seriously? And Balaram said, really. And uh, Balaram decided to forgive. Because Balaram, um, a quality that Lord Shiva shares along with Baladeva is that of Ashutosha. So he may get angry fast, um, but he will also cool down very fast. So the moment he saw Samba, he said, okay, don't repeat this again. And don't ever speak about Krishna like that again. They say, please forgive us. They give a lot of elephants and gifts uh, along with their uh, daughter and send them uh, with uh, great royalty back to Dwaraka. Okay, so this is the story of Baladeva. So, um, uh, Krishna and Balaram, we often see that Krishna is always along with cows. These are the very beautiful deities of Krishna and Balaram in Vrindavan. So, if you haven't gone there, you can go to Vrindavan. Very beautiful Krishna and Balaram are there. You can always see that Krishna is there with the cows and Balaram is always there with the plow. Okay. So, this is a lesson that Krishna and Balaram, just by them standing, they're teaching us. Krishi and Gauraksha. Krishi and Gauraksha. Krishi is agriculture and Gauraksha, protection of cows. Krishna and Balaram, the two gurus are teaching us, the two lords are teaching us that there is no dharma without Krishi. There is no dharma without Gauraksha. If these two are missing, then how can we do dharmic activities? Whenever you're performing a yajna, also you need ghee. Without ghee, you cannot do it. In fact, there are a lot of yajnas that most temples do these days, fire yajnas. Most of the ghee that comes is uh, buffalo ghee. Yajna is not done with buffalo ghee. All the Nandini ghee and all that you get, no? The Nandini very openly says it's not cow, it's a mix. Uh, because, you see, to make ghee, you need curd. And thick curd comes from uh, buffalo. You make uh, ghee out of that. So they make ghee out of that. Buffalo ghee is not used for yajna. In fact, it is inauspicious to use buffalo ghee. That's why the, most of the yajnas these days are not really auspicious because it is done with that. Of course, it can be auspicious if there is cow ghee used. Okay, cow ghee is what is pure. And for that, you need cows, protection of cows. And cows need to be not just locked in a place. They need to be joyful. They need space. They need good food to eat. And yajna also requires many other grains. Um, offering of grains that is not possible without Krishi. And uh, this is an economic lesson also given by the two uh, gurus uh, that Krishi and Gauraksha. If these two are not there, then uh, the world is only in Ugra Karma. We are only creating problems for ourselves. Anyway, so we must pray to Lord Balaram and pray to him that he continues to bless us, continues to give us intelligence, and continues to become our guru. And so that he exposes our own anarthas to ourselves. And we should pray to Balaram that I have a lot of hidden anarthas. They're not coming out. They're hidden. Uh, you know, uh, I may have given this example before, I'm not sure. But when you squeeze rasgulla, what comes out? Sweet juice or spicy juice. What comes out? Sweet juice. When you squeeze lemon, what comes out? Sour juice. Correct. When you squeeze lemon, will any time sweet sugar water come out? No, right? So whatever is inside us, both are round. Okay, both are round. When it is undisturbed, both look the same. All of us, when we are undisturbed, we behave very nicely. The moment we are disturbed, the moment there is stress, the real anarthas, our real juice comes out. 
our real behavior comes out. So that is the difference between an astika and a nastika. The moment there are troubles, there are problems, the nastika will say there is no God. I had so many problems. Where is God when this happened? Where is God when that happened? No God. But an astika, when problems come, sankata bandare venkata ramana. The moment there are problems, they run to venkata. They say that Krishna, please protect me. That is a true astika. Otherwise, normally everybody is very good when there is no stress. Only during stress uh, do our real colors come out. That is why Krishna sometimes he gives us problems. Many times he gives us problems. Okay? So that he wants to actually test and see how are you going to behave in this difficult situation. Will you still remember me or will you forget? Okay? So uh, this is a lesson for all of us. Uh, that when, you know, like uh, uh, Krishna gives troubles, there is an example. There was a person from top, he was throwing a, from the 10th floor, he threw a 10 rupees note. It fell down. A person saw that note, 10 rupees, he put it in his pocket. He was trying to get his attention. Why is this person not looking? He was calling, he couldn't hear. So then he threw a 20 rupees note. He became so happy, he took the 20 rupees note and he put it in his pocket. Then he, he should at least look now where it is coming from. He's not even looking, he's happily putting in the pocket. He threw 100 rupees note, he took that also. Here yeah, today, what a wonderful day. And he put 100, 500, 500 also he put. Then finally what this guy did, he took a small stone and he put it on his head. Immediately he looked on top. Yeah. Who is throwing the stone? So if there is only happiness in our life, we will never look up. We will only think wonderful things are because of my hard work, I've earned so much money, I'm so successful, I'm so educated, etc. Only when there are problems, going up, we will look up. Isn't it? So when problems come in our life, let's appreciate it because it's an opportunity for us to remember Krishna. Okay? Alright. Srila Baladeva Ki, Krishna Balarama Ki, Jagat Guru Srila Prabhupada Ki. Thank you very much.